Hello and welcome, I'm your Kudmaki, and I've got one month left to finish my game. That's one month to take this and turn it into a complete polished game. So here's all the tasks that I need to do in this time, as well as my advice to you for how to finish your games. The release date is set to October 2nd, that's going to be the first Monday of October. My main advice to you when choosing a launch date for a game is to look at what festivals and sales are going to happen and when. You absolutely do not want to launch during a festival or Steam sale. Doing that will absolutely kill your game, so don't do that. So for me, the date that I picked was for one simple reason, the next Steam Festival, that is going to happen on the week after that. Then in mid-October, over there, you've got Halloween, then you've got Black Friday, then Christmas, the New Year, and so on. So given that for me, my goal is to launch a game this year, the latest that I can launch is pretty much just that one week. So unless something really serious happens, something really drastic, then that date is probably going to be the date when the game will launch. Which of course means that the game needs to be done by then. With that in mind, here's my quick advice to you on how to finish games. And my advice is simply just to find an MVP, that's a minimum viable product, so basically just cut down everything for your game to the absolute bare essentials. Just figure out the absolute minimum thing that fully works as a complete game and focus on doing just that. Importantly is make sure you do that way before your targeted release date. The reason for that is because you want to leave some time for doing nothing but polish. It is much, much better to have a smaller but highly polished game as opposed to a huge game with tons of content but all of it is very unpolished. So for me lately I've been working towards getting that MVP done. I actually wanted to get it done by the end of August, but of course, as always with everything, everything takes longer than expected. There are three massive tasks that still need to be done in order to make the game complete. The first one is the interplanetary logistics. This is what I've been working on for the past few days. Basically the ability for the player to colonize another planet, then being able to set up resource chains and transport resources between the planets. Then the second massive task, this one is completely reworking the defense mechanics. Right now the zombies are only extremely basic. They just spawn randomly, they move towards the dinky and they do an attack. I need to rework all of this, I'm going to make some fixed spawn points, I'm going to set up some wave spawning, set up a day-night cycle, I'm going to set up different zombies that require different ammo to kill and so on, and of course I'm going to need to make it all work both in the real world and the off world. The goal is for the player to set up all defenses so that when they're in one world they don't have to worry about the other world. And finally the last task is making the intro mission. Basically I want the game to start on some kind of spaceship which will teach the player the basic controls, as well as work as a sort of mini story. Now for me I'm definitely not a writer, but still it helps to have some kind of basic story to guide the player. The players are going to start off in this spaceship, learn some basic controls, then basically the spaceship is going to crash on the first planet and that's how the game starts properly. I think making that little mini intro mission, I think that is going to add some nice structure to the game. So those are the three massive tasks that I need to do in order to get the game to a complete state, but then after that, like I said, comes the time for polishing. I really need to get those tasks done as soon as possible so I have plenty of time to polish. And that's not just visual polish. It is also adding all of the random features that a complete game must have. For example, I want the game to be fully playable with the controller. That is something I still need to add. With that done, then I will also test the game on the Steam Deck to make sure it also works on there. It should be pretty simple once the controller support is already implemented. Another important thing is localization. My advice to you is do not ignore that. Steam is indeed massive, but the English audience is actually just a small portion of it. So if you just make your game in English, you are actually ignoring a huge amount of people that could enjoy your game. Then the music and sound effects. Right now it's all super basic, pretty much only button sound effects, just a single song. I definitely need to add a ton more on that. And then of course, adding lots of visual polish. I've already added a bunch of animations in the last few updates, but everything is still a bit way too static. I want to add lots of movement to the entire game, make it all feel a bunch more alive. Then making the multiplayer work perfectly is also very important. Again, the game is meant to work both in single player and multiplayer. Right now the multiplayer is all working in technical terms, but there are a lot of visual effects that the clients just don't see, so I definitely need to fix that. Then I also need to polish the lobby scene. Right now it's actually still the exact same super basic one that I initially made in my free multiplayer course. I just copy pasted that entire scene back into this game. After that I would also like to add the various Steam features. So that's adding some achievements, trading cards, Steam Cloud save, possibly adding modding support with Workshop and a bunch more. I'm also going to need to make a brand new trailer. Now for this one, I should probably make that one quickly. A good trailer helps gather wish lists quite a lot, so my advice to you is definitely make sure your trailer and your capsule both are as good as possible. And when all of that is done, basically I'm going to need to constantly playtest the game and balance all the numbers. And before release, I also want to make a massive update to the demo and basically ask all of you to play the game and give me your feedback. Ideally, that should help make sure that the launch version, when the game finally comes out, that one is as awesome as I can make it and as bug-free as possible. So looking at this whole list, I must say I'm quite a bit stressed right now. There's still a ton of work to do. Personally, I know that I can be extremely productive when I put my mind to it, so in 30 days I do know that I can make a massive amount of stuff. For example, the interplanetary system, that one has been really complex to implement. 
It involved tons of scripts, thousands of lines of code. It's insanely complex, but I didn't manage to get it all working in about a week. So looking at that, what I can do in 30 days, that is quite a nice amount of time. But still, that is quite a lot of work. I really want to make sure that the final game is as excellent as I can make it. Then in terms of expected results, right now the wishlist numbers are a bit lower than I would like. Doesn't look like it's going to hit the 5k minimum. Actually, the other day someone asked me if it helps when someone adds a game to their wishlist, even if they're not going to buy the game. Like I said here, the answer is yep, it does help. The most important thing on Steam is just the raw number of wishlists, so a higher amount will lead to more visibility as the game comes out. Then after that initial surge, Steam is going to check the conversion rate, and basically if wishlists and just regular sales if the game sold well, then it's going to keep promoting the game. If not, then it's going to basically stop. So if someone wishlists but then doesn't buy the game, that actually still helps the initial surge, even if it doesn't help afterwards. But again, my hope is that the game is actually good, so that if the game gets some visibility from Steam right in the very beginning, then people who have never heard about the game, they will try it out, they will buy it, and hopefully enjoy it. So with that said, go ahead and add the game to your wishlist if you haven't already. Now, I probably won't hit that 5k minimum. However, at the same time, the goal with this project really isn't massive sales success, so I'm okay with that. My number one goal when I started this project back in March was simply I want to make a game this year. It has been four years since my very last Steam game, which is way too long. So for me, just completing this project, I'm going to consider that a huge success. I'm going to keep trying to make regular videos, trying to mention the game as much as possible to gather as many wishlists as I can before the release, but the main priority is really just making an excellent game. Even if the sales numbers do end up being low, I still really want to make sure that everyone who does play the game has a great time. And of course, in this channel, I also want to really practice what I preach. That's another reason why I decided to make this game. I want to make sure that when you watch my videos, when you follow my tutorials, you know that what I'm teaching here comes from actual real-world experience. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed following this journey. I hope with these devlogs, I hope that by hearing my thoughts on these topics, I hope it has helped you with your own games. With that said, now I've got to get back to work, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.